Hello, friends and newcomers. Welcome back to my sewing room. So, I don't know if y'all seen my last video. Those of you who watch, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I have been working on my On the Farm quilt and, all week, actually. And um, I wanted to show you my progress. As I said, I would keep you um, along to show you what I'm doing. Um, so, I've got the barn finished, I've got the tractor finished, and I've got the corn and tomatoes blocks finished. So I guess I will start off by showing you the barn because I think it looks pretty amazing. I don't have it framed yet, but I'm going to move you down and let you see what I got going on here. And if I could just position you. Let's see. Okay. Bear with me. I got several things going on here, but um, I want to show you my barn. I have to move my camera back. There we go. So this is my barn that I did in the barn board. I did the stone silo and I took some fabrics from other fabrics <laughs> and I put in these awesome flowers in some trees because I thought there was too much sky. And then of course I did my pinwheel, um, quilt in the window here, like um, Lori Holt has in her picture. Mine is very different than Lori Holt's um, barns. Hers are very whimsical. I wanted to make this feel realistic because I wanted it to go with my um, animals photo. So I think I really did pretty good. I am going to need to stitch these down now because some of them didn't quite adhere as well as I want to, but I'm just going to go around and stitch them down and really make them nice. But um, I am going to frame this barn out, I think, in some, um, this green plaid fabric that I have here. And I've already framed the tractor out in the red plaid, which I'm going to show you. So I'm going to take my barn and I'm going to show you my farm all tractor. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm really happy with this. I really need to, um, put in a smokestack yet and I, st and I have to applique the steering wheel on. But, um, and I modified the greenery down here because this would have all been the background fabric, but I wanted to make it look like it was on grass. So I picked out this cute little daisy fabric below. But as you can see, I think it turned out really nice. And I framed it with this wonderful red plaid. So, um, I really got to get that finished up for that. But those are my barn and tractor. So then I did two of these corn and tomatoes blocks and I did them in opposite because I want them in each corner of my the bottom of my quilt and these are out of my Lori Holtz um farm girl vintage I think it was vintage one I'm not really sure I've got I've been working out of these books these books are amazing but I love the corn and I thought about just doing the corn but I really like the corn and tomatoes look and I kind of staggered the, the tomatoes too on each of the different block because these will be in the corner of my quilt. So, um, with Mother's Day up and coming, <laughs> you know, um, I, my mom is the one that has everything and I really love making things in, in my sewing. So, um, I went to the quilt store yesterday. I can't stay away from these places. Um, with my future mother-in-law, Emma, um, we call ourselves besties because we are best friends but um I wanted to take her to farm fresh fabrics because my friend Brenda had taken me there a couple weeks ago and I showed you all the stuff that I got so we went there and oh, going into a quilt store is dangerous for me because I always find something that's like I try to be good but it's hard so anyway um I bought some new fabrics um I'll show you I got this fabric here it's sprinkles and I thought who doesn't love sprinkles on the back of you know some kind of goodie block that I'll end up making. And then I got um, two yards. This was a kind of a rolled up, I think it was a discontinued, but it's very girly and it has the little dresses and the panties and the bras and the shoes, little dogs and a vanity. And I thought, oh, this would be so cute. I'm not sure what I'll do with it yet, but I will make something girly out of it. Um, and let me see, I picked up another one of these, these, um, Oh, they're little whimsical sayings. What quilters really say, or what real quilters really think, I guess, is what it what it says. But these little blocks have these cute little sayings, just like the coffee one that I showed you last time, and I just loved it, you know. So some of the things that it says is, 
Wow, I still have points. I'll show you mine if you will show me yours. Mend and cook are four-letter words. Um, quilters, quilting is always more pressing than housework. I enjoy the ups and downs of quilting. It's not unfinished. It's half finished. <laughs> Behind every quilter, there's good backing. Um, my quilt isn't finished, but the rest of my life is under control. The rest of my life. Yeah. Okay. Quilting is my cup of tea or more so my cup of coffee. <laughs> Um, give a quilter an inch and she'll think she's a ruler. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's some other ones on here. Um, never quilt on an empty stomach. Don't worry, I'm, it'll quilt out. <laughs> Three squares a day. <laughs> I try to stick to that. To quilt is human. To finish is divine. S. Asking a quilter to mend is like asking a chef to wash dishes. <laughs> Celebrate quilting friendships. What can't be cured must be endured. I definitely have a fever of addiction. <clears throat> the finest quilts were first experience. I have a lot of first experiences, you know, with everything I do, you know, the blocks. My world is a quilt top waiting to happen. Oh, so true. Um, make your point. <laughs> Chocolate, coffee, fabric, and scraps. The four basic food groups. Definitely mine. And the last one is... Oh, heaven is a quilter's haven. Heaven is a quilter's haven? Is, it, is a quilter's... Heaven is a quilter's haven. Is a quilter's heaven. I don't know what that one means, but anyway, they're really fun. And I thought these would be great, you know, if I could take one of these little blocks and maybe put them in the back of a quilt just for something whimsical. Just, I don't know. I thought they were really fun. So, <laughs> so I bought it just like the coffee ones. And then I was getting ready to leave after I cashed out. And I, of course I saw this fabric when I walked in and this has a lot of whimsical sayings and these are these little blocks. And I'm going to show you what I mean, because I think this would make a great quilt with if they were bordered. So I'm going to bring you down and show you some of these little sayings on this. This is a piece of fabric and it has all these little quilt blocks on here. And there is all of these fun, funny little sayings like, I woke up with threadhead. Oh God, I always say I woke up with bedhead, but now it's threadhead. Stitch happens. Oh, how cute, you know, that they, <laughs> something got misplaced. Stuff like that does happen, but sometimes you just got to think of it as a design choice or, you know, an eye spy. Uh, I love this. Son of a stitch. <laughs> oh goodness, you know, you hate to have to cuss, but what the shell. <laughs> so happy together. Zip it. Don't cross me. The sewn ranger, so cute. Opposites attract. The needles, tumbling block, block party. Thread of the class, full court press. Life's a stitch. Pin and tonic. Pin pals. What's sewing on? <laughs> we quilt the city on rock and roll. You've got me in stitches. I'm so fly. I mean, Oh snap, press on, cut it out, quilt be. I mean, just really fun and cute little blocks that I think sometime when I'm not pressed to do other things, I am going to make a cute little quilt out of that just because it would be fun and whimsical. So um, the next thing I wanna show you, I, uh, Mother's Day is a fast approaching and um, I want to make my mother something. So, and of course I said, my mother has everything and she's hard to buy for. She says she's not, but I say she is because she has everything. So when I was in the quilt shop, I'm, I'm looking at these patterns and I found this Thimble Blossoms um, and it's a sewing machine. And I have a sewing machine in my Lori Holt books, which is really cute, but I thought this one was something different because I like the heart on it. And I also like the little tomato pin cushion. So um, I got home last night after I got out of the quilt shop and I delved into this and this was a challenging little pattern and I'm not good with patterns, but I figured it out and um, they, like Holt, Lori Holt, they have everything that's lettered and they wanted you to cut out everything that was lettered from the background to the machine to the, you know, all the little pieces. And I didn't quite get it at first, but um, they wanted me to put all of the A's in one pile, you know, whatever part it was from 
and then all the B's and the C's and the D's and so on. So anyway, um, and of course, picking out the fabrics was a little um, little challenging because to figure out what you want to um, make it out of. So anyway, yesterday I, I found a fat quarter in this beautiful batik and I knew I wanted to make my mom something out of it because she likes batiks. And also I found this um, fat quarter of uh, this lovely fabric and it has all these really cool sayings on it about being blessed and family and different things and it's just very pretty and it almost looks like a batik but it's not so i wanted to do something with these but i think with this blue fabric um what i want to do i made the sewing machine and i want to turn it into like a project bag with a zip um just an enclosed project bag so what i'm going to do is make this the bag the back of the bag and this leftover piece I'm going to put across the top to um, be a part of to encase the zipper because I pretty much used up this whole fat quarter, but it turned out great. And I had some other scrap fabrics and things that I added into this. So I'm going to show you what I made this, this design here from the pattern, what I built last night. And it probably took me a couple hours, but you know, that's with the cutting and the prepping and everything. But by this, when I got it all cut and prepped, it went together fairly quickly and it wasn't really that hard but it's a lot of piecing and I am addicted to this piecing so um, I'm gonna show you this beautiful thing and I'm going to make a project bag out of it so this is what I made and as you can see I used the pink as the background color and I had this white and white with um, black paisleys on it and I just love it me and my sister and my mom we all love paisley so I thought how fitting so then I these aren't batiks but these are some, just some prints that I had in my scrap um, bin for the the thread spools and I use a little newspaper print for the top these little strip here are one inch squares and I just did them in the batiks from kind of lights to darks to kind of lend them for the for the little panel up here and then the heart it was a, a batik pink the tomato was a red and then the green stems were a batik so I kind of have a mixture of batiks in here with some regular fabrics and then this piece of purple here is a a piece of a fat quarter I liked um, for the sewing bed, which I thought was really cool. The needle um, was just a piece of gray that I'd had. And then this little piece here that, that holds the needle was a piece of leftover um, border that I put around my tractor. So I thought I'll just put that in there because I'm just trying to make everything kind of match and be pretty. And I hope that it doesn't all blend too much together, but I think she's gonna love it. So this is what it's gonna be is a zip across the top with this long piece here. And I'll kind of try to give you a visual. And I'm going to put a zipper in here and then maybe make a small little handle so she can carry it and then have the blue fabric on the back. And this will make a nice little um, project bag to carry her sewing things or whatever because we do all get together and sew every Thursday. So this is going to be for my mom and um, I'm going to have to try to get this finished up. And I have batting on the back. I'm going to, I'm going to quilt it all the way around and really make it nice and a nice thick bag. So my other friend, Marlene, who comes and sews with me every Thursday, she's one of my great friends. She's the reason why I have this house. I'm making her a project bag, but this is the Lori Holt sewing machine. It was in my book. And I did a light tan background, and then I did this fun little flowers, and then the red dials, and then some little piece of, um, in my scrap bin with these little numbers on it, I thought would be very fitting for the control panel. And I will have to stitch my needle in with my sewing machine, or I could then do a hand stitching, which I might just do a little stitch with my sewing machine a couple times just to make like a nice little needle there. But um, I think this will make a really nice project bag for my friend Marlene. I even got a button with an M on it that I might put here on the dial. And I think on the back of it, I'm gonna use this back quarter of this red uh, and white small print and, and make a little handle. And this will make her a really nice project bag to um, carry her sewing things in too. So I have another friend, which is my mom's friend. Her name is Kay. And she comes every Thursday, but she doesn't sew. So I haven't started hers yet, but I'm going to do her a project bag in this um, yarn. So there's three things of yarn, and then there's a crochet hook here, if you can see that. This is in my Lori Holt book, and this is the Vintage Farm Girl too. So I'm going to do that block and make a, a fun little bag for my friend Kay, and my mom's friend Kay. And then my stepmother, Bonnie, um, who is going to come and see me this weekend, I thought about making her something 
maybe in a pillow with this little canning jar. And then of course you can do this design here with a little flower that's in part of this book somewhere that you can put a flower in it. I thought maybe about doing two of those and maybe make it into a fun little pillow for my stepmom. Um, my stepmom used to sew quite a bit, but she hasn't sewn in a while and I need to really get her over here and get her inspired again. But these are just some of the upcoming and fun things that I have going on. So um, um, I've been very busy outside. Um, we've had a few nice days and I've spent a lot of time out there planting plants and and flowers and things and getting ready for spring. And But I would live in this room <laughs> because I am obsessed with um, the sewing and making the blocks and really excited. So I would, I would keep going on the on my on the farm quilt but mother's day is coming and i really wanted to make something special for my moms and and my friends so um i think that would be really fitting and fun to make them something especially when we all sew together so and my and my my mom-in-law to be emma she wants me to make her a um round table topper cover for her dining room table she has this little table i'm going to do her a star and maybe do like a table topper thing for her so I have got a lot to do <laughs> for Mother's Day. So I'm going to be busy this week. So um, just wanted to give you an update. Um, I hope you all have a happy Mother's Day. Um, enjoy your mothers. Mothers, um, enjoy your children. Um, I'm not a mom, but I am a dog mom. And my dogs love me. At least I think they do. <laughs> but I love them probably more than they know. But um, for those of you that don't have your mom... Um, Think about the good things and the things that your your mom instilled in you and the love that you had and um, cherish your memories. Um, but anyway, I hope you have a happy Mother's Day and I will see you soon. Okay? Talk to you. Bye. <laughs>